This thing looks like a giant parasite. I don't even know where to start. Okay, so when it comes to animals that live in the water, I've been known to say things like, they're aliens. Technically, those animals have been on Earth much longer than human beings. Take the hagfish, for instance. Hagfish have been on this planet Earth since before dinosaurs. Hagfish fossils have been dated as far back as 300 million years. And it shows. Hagfish have been described as the type of monster that H.P. Lovecraft would have come up with. But at least with science fiction, I can sleep at night knowing that it's all made up. Thanks to the internet and this photo that's been haunting me all over Instagram, I am keenly aware that hagfish are on the planet Earth with us right now. There are 76 species of hagfish and they love eating dead and dying fish off the seafloor. This guy, on the other hand, is just casually like, yup, here's the reproductive system, just like throwing the eggs behind him. It just, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always gonna put gloves on when I'm handling an animal that can survive an asteroid hitting the earth, blocking out the sun and killing all the dinosaurs. I would assume that they are to be respected. Why can't y'all just put gloves on? I don't understand. And these are the main people who are always mashing all the buttons at the ATM, trying to count, change, and give it to you, talking out close to your face, turning every doorknob everywhere. They're not even going into the room. They're just touching doorknobs. And we have to be on the earth with you and the hagfish. Outside of being casually dissected by gloveless scientists, hagfish usually have a really firm grip on life. And they should, because hagfish have four hearts, one main heart and three accessory pumps. Apparently, I can't read. They have everything they could possibly need to survive. And I mean everything. Their babies are actually born with both sets of sex organs. And when they get older, they become male or female, but they can change sex from season to season, from season to season. Here's something that I can't wrap my head around fully. Hagfish ancestors could see but modern day hagfish only have these rudimentary eyes that can just pick up light. Cause who needs eyes when you have a mouth like that? Let's just pull over for a second and discuss the mouth because it is doing the utmost. Hagfish don't have jaws. They have this tongue-like thing that's covered in teeth that just emerges when it's time for them to eat. If you're wondering what I mean by emerges, this is what I mean by emerges. That's worse than if it actually just stayed out the whole time. So when it pulls this tongue thing covered in teeth back into its mouth, those teeth pinch close and just drag whatever it's touching into the mouth hole. The water is full of scavengers and predators. It is extremely competitive to find food. That's not a problem for hagfish because they have a super slow metabolism and can go up to seven months without eating seven months. So we know what hagfish eat, but what's eating hagfish? Not a lot of things. When a small or medium sized fish tries to take a bite out of a hagfish, two very important defense mechanisms come into play and they are unique. First of all, hagfish have really loose skin, which I never thought could be a superpower, but apparently it is. In a study called Flaccid Skin Protects Hagfish from Shark Bites, scientists, <laughs> You work super hard, you get a PhD, you write this paper after doing all this research, you submit it to a journal, it gets accepted. People are like, oh my gosh, congratulations, you got published. What, what, what's your paper called? Uh, flaccid skin protects hagfish from shark bites. Say less. Researchers found that the loose connection of the skin to the hagfish's body actually protects it from being punctured during an attack and protects its internal organs. But that's just for the initial bite. The real reason why hagfish have been able to live for 300 million years unbossed and unbothered, the secret weapon, the reason for this multiple car accident, is you guessed it, slime. When hagfish are attacked or scared, they release large quantities, and I mean large quantities of slime. They've got hundreds of slime glands along the sides of their bodies and they've been setting them things off for 300 million 
years. The slime itself is made up of mucus and fibers. These fibers are so thin that they've been compared to spider silk and they're just as strong. They're so efficiently coiled and packaged inside the hagfish's bodies that six inches worth of hagfish thread can fit into a single cell. When you look at these fibers under a microscope, they actually look like a tiny ball of yarn. And they're called skeins, like a skein of yarn, which is something I did not know before I started doing research for this video because who knows that? Anyway, during a sliming event, these tightly coiled fibers unravel and when that's mixed with exploding mucus and water, you get large quantities of expanding slime in a very short amount of time. I'm talking up to four cups of slime in a fraction of a second. This slime is fascinating and effective. So effective that hagfish themselves have to actually sneeze to clear the slime out of their own nostrils. Anyway, when a fish bites down after being denied by the flaccid skin, it is instantly stopped in its tracks by a face full of suffocating slime. In a video called Attacking Shark Gagged by Slime, a shark sees a hagfish and thinks that it's gonna get an easy meal and goes ahead and tries to take a little bite out of the old hagfish and is instantly like, the slime itself doesn't have a smell, but when hagfish are really stressed out, they tend to add things to it like vomit and feces. And since they already eat rotting flesh, you can just imagine what that must be like. The unique properties and potential uses for this slime has fascinated scientists for a while now. In 2014, a lab successfully harvested large quantities of hagfish thread and spun it into silk. This could be a potentially earth-friendly replacement for the petroleum-based nylon that we usually find in yoga pants. Leave it to humans to be like, yeah, this creature is fascinating. It's been around for 300 million years. We don't understand all of the properties, but uh, do you think we could make leggings out of this. Anyway, the only things that can really eat hagfish are really large fish because they have large gills that can't be easily clogged and mammals. And when I say mammals, I mean humans too. That's right, humans eat hagfish. Again, human beings. Wow, 300 million year old creature predates and survived the dinosaurs. Go ahead and chop some onions, I'm trying to see something. You can do a lot with some chopped onions and bell peppers. Which brings me to this picture. Here's what happened. 2017, Oregon, USA. A truck carrying 13 containers of approximately 7,500 pounds of hagfish comes to a construction site on the highway, is unable to stop in time, hits those brakes a little too hard, and one of those 13 containers goes flying into the opposite lane. It hits a Nissan and causes this accident. The thickness of the slime is just, if I was there, the firefighters would have gotten there and been like, oh my God, ma'am, we're here to help you. We can get you out. And I'd be like, no, I'm actually pretty good in here. I'm gonna wait for the sanitation people to come. These hagfish were being transported to Korea because in Korea, they've overfished their hagfish population and now have to depend on other parts of the world to import it. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature released a report in 2011 that stated that 12% of hagfish populations are at an elevated risk for extinction. They're literally ancient, they represent a unique lineage of evolution, and they're really important when it comes to recycling things in our ecosystem. That's it for now, and if you come across a hagfish, leave them alone, wash your hands, and if you must, just put some gloves on. Shout out to everybody watching this. There's a whole lot more where that came from. Tune in next time to see you outside. I think there's too much news.